Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. It's the first show of January 2020. We're going to be looking at how tech can help me to achieve my goals when it comes to my kind of New Year's resolutions. Recordings are trusted only to solid state drives by Kingston Technology. Revive your computer with improved performance and reliability over traditional hard drives with Kingston SSDs. Category 5 TV streams live with Telestream Wirecast and Nimble Streamer. Tune in every week on Roku, Kodi, and other HLS video players. For local showtimes, visit Category5.tv. Welcome to the show, everybody. It's so great to have you here. Happy New Year Yay. as we kick off 2020 with our very first show of the new year. Uh, and uh, it's it, we had a little bit of time off, which yeah. was weird for us because we've never, ever done that before. And I'll tell you what, by halfway through our little break, uh, we're, we're in our private staff chat room talking about how much we miss all of you and can't wait to be back. Uh, and here we are. It was too so. long. Too long a break. Yeah. Let's well, and, and you guys got the extra week because of the weather here That's in, right. in yes. Ontario, Canada. And incidentally, and then all of a sudden it was like, perfect dry weather for yeah. a couple weeks yes and, and then today yes today the forecast was snowmageddon school buses horrendous. are canceled Nothing yeah, actually... nobody's even on the roads like it's yeah. like yeah it was pretty quiet in town it's true yeah. mm -hmm. the, and but it wasn't nearly like it was three weeks true ago. but this weekend's gonna be nasty is it yeah what are we looking for Oh, like a whole slew of freezing rain and bad snow uh, and I'm like yeah. i really don't feel like working this weekend mm -hmm. i have to Mm. Not so much. Mm. Well, and you drive a ways to the city as well, right? Yeah. At this Toronto. point, I'm like all over Ontario. Oh, yeah. One day I'm Kingston to Hamilton. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Long drive. My commute's like 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Don't mean to rub that in. Um, right. Now, you were away the week that uh, that I was here all by myself. Yes. And so you missed out on, on your Christmas gift, Jeff, because I, I got a sense of what you've always wanted. I mean, I kind of got a sense. Why do of I feel like I'm being for. set up here? I, it, no, it's not set up. It's a gift because we love you Please around. Please open it on air. Yeah. Is that what I'm supposed to do? Oh, yeah. Open it oh, up. Okay. Yeah, it's a little late. I know it's a belated Christmas gift for Jeff, but uh, I thought this sports. is what he, I, he just really seemed to have this on his mind. <laughs> oh, what is this? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can, can I find out what it is? Oh, yes. Myth balls. <laughs> I don't, you don't just, throw it at a Tesla Cybertruck. You just seem to have that on your mind, Jeff. And so I wanted to hook you <laughs> up. Funny. Thank know, you. <laughs> I hope you enjoy. Um, okay. Before we jump into it this week, I want to remind you to click on uh, the subscribe button on YouTube. And also you can click on that bell to make sure that you get the notifications anytime we are live. Yep. This, the past couple of weeks for me have been uh, interesting personally because as the new year approached i started thinking you know am i going to do a new new year's resolution this year and i thought nah don't it never really stick to it, it never right. really works out and then and then i had some ideas and i started thinking that maybe if i take a different approach i can actually stick to these new year's resolutions buy more tech buy more tech that that's a great resolution that is all I, I mean, I've got some extra pounds right about here. Oh, dude, I totally win that category. Uh, look, look, look j j j jiggle like a bowl full of jelly. And, and, <laughs> and hmm. I, I always want to get rid of that, but I don't know how. Well, right. you could just edit it out. Oh, You're I can't. Good with Photoshop. It, I'm removing it in post. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> be like, what are they talking just, about? Just it's put a like a six pack right exactly. there. <laughs> but doesn't it like uh, to me as like this? Like I've never been physical fitness guy. I'm I'm the computer nerd, so I'm at my computer desk ten it's hours a day. Time. Yes, but yeah. at the computer desk all right. day long. This stereotype doesn't usually like it's not usually a ripped individual in front of a computer. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be that computer guy <laughs> yeah. where they call you to do the networking just because the girls are like hey look at him <laughs> <That's right. laughs> 
<laughs> no, yeah. that's not my life. No. <laughs> but I would like to be healthier. Yes. I'd like to live longer. I'd like to be here for my kids. And I want to be uh, as healthy as I possibly can be. Okay. And that's I fair. think that the way to do that is just, I got to shed off a couple of pounds. I know that. Uh, maybe you're in the same boat, but I, I don't know how to do it. And I always think about, well, I could go to the gym. Well, I don't have time to go to the gym. Well, I could get a personal <laughs> you don't trainer. Have time to do anything. Right. But I could get a personal trainer. Well, I don't have the money for a personal trainer, let alone the time to go to the gym to get personally trained. <laughs> it's just nothing seems to work. Right. And I've tried cutting down on how much I eat at meals. I've tried changing what kind of stuff I eat at meals. And it never seems to work. Mm -hmm. And slowly and slowly i've never really like i've never packed on like a lot all at once but uh, like slowly gradually getting a little bit bigger right. and bigger each year and then metabolism changes yeah. as the years change i'm 40 now right and so I was, i'm starting to look at that and thinking okay i'm a quarter of the way through my life <laughs> that's impressive so math has always been his strong suit <laughs> i just decided to take a different approach okay so my approach this year isn't to lose weight. Okay. My approach instead is to educate myself about my health so that oh. I can find the motivation and even arm myself with the information that I need in order to make better decisions. That makes sense. I like it. And so, and, and I think it's practical. Mm -hmm. I think that it's possible. And so that's why I wanted to bring it to the show because I want you to join me for this journey and we're, we're going to see together where I end up. So then I started thinking, okay, well, how can I do this? So I got on to Google, mm -hmm. the search engine of choice. <laughs> <laughs> and I just typed in just on a whim. Um, I, th I think it was something like smart scale. Okay. Because my scale is like the old dial kind and right. you step on it and it says one number. You step off it and you step back on it and it's five pounds off from the first number. So Which I know it's not can accurate. be ideal depending on... <laughs> Which direction goes. it's going. Yes, I oh, five pounds. Five minutes ago, I was 10 pounds lighter. <laughs> I put one foot on the toilet and left. I lost 30 pounds. <laughs> so I did this search to start to see if there was technology that I could do within a, a very reasonable budget. So the budget, just so you know, that I set for myself is I said, can I do this for a hundred dollars? Mm -hmm. So can okay. I get everything that I need in about what it would cost? F I would imagine for like an hour, maybe two hours with a trainer. Right. Uh, yeah. How much does a gym cost? Like would I, mine how is very affordable. Mine is $11 a month. Wow. Oh, that's like one of those, like, like, like a but it's a budget gym. Oh, okay. But then also I pay for an app, like a fitness training app, mm -hmm. fifty dollars a year. Mm, okay. Which, okay. Which like I guess I always imagined me. it more expensive, but for me it's the time thing more than the exactly. money. Yeah. If it was eleven bucks a month, I could do that. Right. But the time thing is not the problem though with eleven dollars a month is mm -hmm. it's not expensive enough that you feel bad not going. Oh right. Catch Fair twenty two. Yeah. Right. So you're just like meh. It's only 11 bucks. I okay. can keep paying for that. Anyway, right. so your way is, is smarter. My way is just to say, okay, I'm going to budget 100 bucks. I had some Christmas money and I said, oh, this is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to see if I can find technologies that, because we live in a time when technology exists that we can do this, mm -hmm. that can help me on this quest. Not to lose weight, but to educate myself about my health and then in turn probably lose some weight along the way. Right. Okay. Because lifestyle choice. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I'm not a medical professional. I don't know if that's obvious or not. Um, it should be very obvious. But just a little disclaimer off the top. Uh, we're not giving any medical advice here today. All we're talking about is self-improvement through technology that can help us to achieve those goals. Yeah. That's it. That's fair. So it's just self-improvement and maybe it'll work for you. Maybe it'll work for me. I hope it'll work for me, but you're along for the ride and we're going to see. I feel like at the end of the year, we need to do a like follow up to this. We're going to check in every now and again. Okay. Good. And in fact, if you're a patron, uh, patreon.com slash category five, you're going to be receiving regular updates as well. You're going to be able to track my progress. And it would be really cool if others like were to also get on board you're and do to. like yeah. social like competitions and yeah. or just sharing. Right. There Not you necessarily go. competition. We're going to have category five biggest loser edition. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's get into the first 
device that I found. Okay. okay. Keeping in line with my budget, this was $35. Think about that for a second. So wow. my first search was um, for a smart scale, not really knowing what I was looking for. Right. I need to just look up what my smart scale costs. Okay. Because it's not that cheap. Okay. And so you can tell me if maybe these are similar devices. Uh, so let's get into scale. it. This, uh, I have a short link for you, cat5.tv slash scale, and let's open it up. And I have opened it, and I've paired it. I received this yesterday, so I've already used it oh. twice, okay? So I've stood on it twice. So what's different about the Renfo Smart Scale, I'm calling it a Smart Scale, they do not call it that. That's not what they deem it. Okay. It's not just a scale, okay? What? So... Okay, so why do they not call it a smart scale? Because it's like, um, well, you see these metal pieces? Yes. So you, you can't use it when you're wet. Don't get out of the bath uh, and stand yeah, on okay, it. Makes sense. This is an electronic device. And when I step on it, with my feet touching all of these diodes, I feel a little like Dr. Ho in my foot. Oh. Just a okay, little, little tingly, tingly yeah. sensation. Okay? okay. I'm going to show you the app that, that it's actually paired with. So you can see how incredible this is. Just I'm looking down at my notes. So they, they call it bioelectric impedance analysis. So using these bioelectric sensors, it's able to track a whole lot more than your standard scale. Okay. So for 35 bucks, this tracks. Ready? Yeah. Okay, my weight, obviously. Okay. Body fat percentage. Okay. BMI, water percentage. Hmm. Like I can tell how much water weight I'm carrying, fat-free body weight. What would I weigh if I didn't have all this fat? Any fat at all? Which skeletal, would not be yeah, skeletal muscle, muscle mass, bone mass, visceral fat, subcutaneous fat, protein, basal metabolism, and body age. It, can, it tells me all that. Really? Yeah. From your feet. From my feet for thirty-five bucks. So of course it's much more than just weight. Huh. So I'm just going to move the box out of the way here, just kind of right over there. So it looks like that, just like a scale, right? Yes. So you know funny, knowing that it's glass, I'm like, I wouldn't want to step on that because I break it. Well, it'll, <laughs> it'll take like, I think it's like 300 pounds or something like that. Here's a quick correction. This smart scale is made using five millimeter thick tempered glass. It can support a weight of up to 396 pounds or 180 kilograms. You want to like observe the manual, make sure um, I did check that um, that it would take weight. Yep. And well, obviously it will. It does have some support in the middle there. Uh, I did see one review where somebody had broken it. And I really felt when I read that review, like they didn't read the warnings the the right. that you have to step down you have to step down on each of these sensors yeah that makes i sense. feel like they must have stepped like smashed down in the middle, right in the middle. and cracked it or something right that's just kind of right. how it felt it certainly feels solid anyways so with all those things that it's able to track i'm able to find out like my my body's age yes so yesterday when I first tested myself, I was 44 years old. Uh oh. So yeah, four, four years older than I'm supposed to be. Right. But that's not bad. Birth. That's not, but, that's not bad, but it's <clears throat> also not great. I it's not of, 60. I kind of want to do it, except that I don't want to put my bare feet on your scale. Well, and I don't want you to either because I don't want it to change. It'll be like, my, whoa, you're so wow, good. Wow, you're doing so good, Robbie. So this is only you that can use it. Like mm. your wife couldn't C stand could on you it. Multi, could you set up multiple users on that scale? That's a beautiful thing. Yes, you can. Oh, okay. that is good. However, I'm holding my phone right now. It's oh. paired right now. Yes. So if you stepped on this, it would go into my I'm app. I'm not going to. I, A, because I'd have to take my socks off and step with my bare feet on your scale. And that <laughs> would be weird to me. Okay. It is multi-user, though, which okay. I thought was cool because, cool. Uh, yeah, my wife could use it if she needed it or wanted to, but uh, she has no use for it. She's gorgeous. Um, well. So <laughs> um, I'm going to just actually bring up the app for you, and I want to show you what uh, what the setup process was like. It was absolutely brain dead simple to get this thing paired into my phone. Um, so jumping into that, all I had to do was just open, add the device, step on the scale once, and then it detected the device itself. Cool. Now, this is going to be embarrassing. I'm going to step on the scale. 
and you can see it's spinning there. It's zapping my feet. This is great. You're so vulnerable. I'm very <laughs> vulnerable right now. So there I am. 191 oh pounds right now. I haven't this seen is a 191 in point. A That's long my starting time. point. That so is awesome. What that tells me. I'm going to change modes here. And I'm going to actually do this live so that you two can interact with me. So this morning, I weighed myself again, and I'm a little bit lighter, so I like my morning weight. I'm going to hey, use that. Good. So I, I only weigh myself in the morning. <laughs> my morning weight is fast. So I've brought up the, my weight, and, and I look like I'm doing really, really well. I'm down 3.2 pounds from last night. Whoa. Okay? So it's already tracking. So by doing morning and night, it's actually tracking those trends and where I'm at throughout the day. So your and intention me goals. is twice a day. Yeah. To weigh yourself. Yeah. Hmm. Once in the morning, once, once when I'm getting like my PJs just, on, kind yeah. of thing, getting ready for a show. Okay. So what's interesting here in the app is that now that it's gathered all this information, mm -hmm. look at all that. So not wow. just my weight, but BMI, body fat, and so on. So if I actually touch my weight, it shows me where I fall on the scale, where I should be and where, where I am right now. Right. Okay. So again, that doesn't tell me to lose weight. That shows me what is a healthy weight, consider, considering where I should be with my height and my, my age. Right. Could you use that and have displays without pairing it to a smart device? This yeah, you can use it as just a standard room. scale. Yeah. Okay. Like if you want to just measure your weight, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, but, but I wanted to do so much more. Yes. I've clicked on body fat here. And it shows my body fat is 24.5%, which is just on, I, I'm going to be a glass half full guy and say that that's just on the edge of acceptable. <laughs> I'm not going to mention that that's just on the edge of obesity, but Wow, you that's, go from acceptable to obesity? Yeah. I feel like that's a big jump. That's really mean. Um, so I want to actually bring it down. I'm, I'm going to feel really, really good if I ever get down to like the fitness area or in right. the middle, low, acceptable range okay. Right. okay so that kind of stuff helps me to just kind of start setting goals so then i can click on all of these things and i see my metabolic age is 44 and it tells me the ideal physical body age uh which today is 43 by the way i lost a year overnight i had a really good sleep this is great <laughs> but that's only tracking after two yeah. two steps on the scale so yes. it's going to get more and more accurate as i go Ideal physical body age is two thirds of the actual age. So that again, doesn't tell me what to do. Doesn't tell me what I should be doing. It just gives me Robbie, the guy who doesn't have time to go to the gym, some kind of goal. So I can see that, okay, I would love to get down to 42 within the next couple of weeks. Right. And, and start, and, and start seeing what it takes to do those things. Yes. I can tell you as somebody who has a smart scale, mm -hmm. um, that it is very motivating. That's be, all I want right? is motivation. It is very motivating. And some <laughs> amount of direction. Yes. Like knowing that, hey, I should try to get my age down to in the 30s. Yeah. Right. That'd be amazing. <laughs> Could you imagine? So each of these items has something else. Like if I click on muscle mass, I have high muscle mass. Been working out, as you can tell. And, and all that kind of stuff is here in the interface. It just makes it really, really accessible, really easy for me to understand as a, as a kind of a noob. Right. Now, in order to figure out like your BMI, did you have to put in parameters such as your height? Yes. And, okay. Mm -hmm. So there yeah. was some configuration on that end. Yes. Okay, which that. was surprisingly <clears throat> simple because uh, it's birthday. Mm -hmm. height, which I just took off my driver's license. It allowed me to switch between um, centimeters and inches. Right. Okay. Right. So um, it, it was really quick to set up, really easy to pair and awesome. Cool. So, so I'm really pleased with that. I think that's going to have a big impact on my ability to, um, to find and create some goals for myself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you said you wanted to learn more about your health. Yeah. So other than just seeing these stats, yeah. What does that mean? Like, well, the, the goals that it shows. So if I fire back up my app here. So the, the fact that, for example, it shows this graph here that shows that if I was 165, I'd be on the high end of normal. They use the term right. normal, but the, the healthy weight yeah. for my age and height. So that can be, for me, a goal. Yes. Right. So I guess what I'm, I'm, the leap I'm trying to get to is... Mm -hmm. How do you make change there? Because if personally, just, how do I make yeah, changes like if in my life? If you're just standing on that and you're looking at it going, 
I've tried. Oh, it's my hopeless. Food in the past. Like I've, you know, I've tried things in the past, but now yeah. I've got something that's tracking me. Like, it's how do you the look at that? Positive reinforcement. Of I, it, I think right? so. It that's is, my. That's what exactly. I'm thinking. Exactly. It's the fact that when you make choices, like okay, instead of eating pasta noodles, I'm going to eat zucchini for dinner. How did you know? Right. Yeah. And then you weigh yourself, and you're like, oh wait, that worked. Or right. Yeah. Instead of but having one meal is not going to make a difference. No. So it's, it's a long term and lifestyle changes and things yeah. like that. For yeah. example. I'm going to walk my dog a little more often. Right. right. Okay. So just getting out and doing that kind of stuff. Right. Um, I did, <laughs> pardon me, a fair bit of walking over the holidays um, and really enjoyed walking while my daughter shopped. So she was doing her Christmas shopping and I right. walked and walked and walked through the mall. That works. So just a very simple way to, to do something. But yeah, you mentioned zucchini. Yes. So my wife was making spaghetti last night mm -hmm. and I had already told her that I was going to try to reduce my car, uh, my carb intake because yes. I read, um, some scientific studies that taught, and again, not medical advice. I don't know all this stuff, but I'm learning. Okay. So this is for me. Um, I learned that my body is burning carbohydrates because I'm taking in so many carbs. So then I'm not burning any fat. Right. But if I reduce my carbohydrate intake, it doesn't have the carbs to burn, so it's going to be burning some of my body fat. So right. I'm going to reduce my body fat and get a little healthier. Right. So that's something that I want to try to do is try to bring down my carbs. So two examples from yesterday that were really, really easy is we were having spaghetti for supper. So instead of spaghetti, the sauce was already made. <laughs> Pardon me. I just simply spiralized a zucchini. And okay. I sauteed it with some garlic powder, some olive oil, and it was really, really good yes. it, as, as a sp spaghetti alternative. Right. It was like spiralized, it was so big, long, stringy mm. noodles of zucchini. I know you don't like zucchini. You've got to try this, dude. You've got to try it. It was really, really good. So I didn't take in any carbs on that. Can you spiralize pizza into spaghetti noodles? <laughs> I don't see why not. No, it's got a crust. That's carbs. Um, so then later, later on in the night, pardon me, and I've had this tickle all week, but um, so forgive me. It's going around. Yeah. Um, later on in the night, I wanted a snack and I started looking at the chip bags and the carbs are really high, like 30 grams, 35 grams of a serving of potato chips. Dehydrated chickpeas are way better. Chickpeas? Okay. Chickpeas, I've also heard kale chips. Yes. So, so these are just little yep. ways that just by being conscious of it, Jeff. So I'm conscious of it. So I'm starting to make decisions where I say, okay, I'm not going to have the chips because I've already had enough carbs today. So I'm not going to have 30, 35 grams of carbs. Right. Um, and that's, I'm not hydrate? counting. No, I don't. Um, I'm not counting carbs. I'm not counting cholesterol or anything like that. Yeah. I'm just saying, okay, if it's, I'm aiming for like 50 or less carbs per day, uh, grams. And so if I'm approaching that, then I'm just not going to have chips. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. So. Okay. This, as you mentioned, kind of gives me positive reinforcement motivation. Exactly. It lets me challenge myself in a competitive way. Okay. So I'm competing with myself to say, okay, can I do this? And I'm not starving myself or anything like that. I'm just, I've got information about myself that I can now use to try to get healthier. Mm -hmm. That's that my sense. goal. That's what I want to try. So will you join me for that? And over the course of the next several months, I would imagine, I mean... Let's see where I go. So I've set my target weight here as 150. Yeah, it's, that's good. I think that's a, a fair goal. Mm -hmm. I think you're going to look skinny at 150. I think so. It says that the high end of normal is 165 for me. So if I got to 150, that'd be insane. Apparently, my ideal body weight mm -hmm. is 192. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think I would look incredibly ill at 192. Mm -hmm. I am above my ideal body weight too, but I'm happy with where I'm at, mm -hmm. right? Like my, yeah, my fine. ideal body weight, I think is 113 or 114 or something for my height. I would have to lose almost I, 75 pounds to get to that. Mm -hmm. Like, could you imagine taking 75 pounds off me? Like, I think I would look not healthy. Yeah. Hmm. That's a lot. Wow. How, how much would you say you weighed when we met each other? Uh, you were a lot younger. Back, I, back I was 150 when station, I got married. Uh, I think I was 205. Okay, yeah. So 191 would seem. Yeah. When I look back small. at photos of when Jen and I were dating, yeah, I was like the two 205, mm -hmm. and like the cheekbones were in, and like I was quite. I don't know, skinny is the right word, mm -hmm. but compared to what I am now, it was like I would, you know, the wind blowing. It's, right. Jeff's gone. 
So, <laughs> so if I had to go like 10 pounds lower, be like, oh my goodness. We are talking weight. Um, just for those of you who are wondering, I'm five foot eight. So you can kind of get an idea where I fall at one, 191 pounds or 187. So I clicked on fat free body weight, which I think is kind of interesting. Like what if I didn't have that extra fat? Right. And it says that I would be 141.8. So that's kind of neat. Mm, no, okay. that's Wait, not right. On. I don't know. I'm learning. That's not right. No, because had... my fat free body weight, hold on, let me just. What is fat mine. free body weight then? Am I not understanding what that means? Is that like that if you means? had. No, like... you're right. You're, I, you're right. It's weird, okay. the fat free body weight. But it's not n- normal. Like, because oh, okay. you need some fat. On that's your like body, if I had right? no fat. And my I was fat like, free oh. body weight is 80 pounds. <laughs> Okay. That's crazy. Wow. But that doesn't make any sense in That's real That's just life. your bones. You would, no, you, you would need, actually like be Isn't it like 12 okay. to 15%? Yeah. So s- stick a couple pounds on there yeah. for fat. Yeah. All right. It's healthy. Very good. So, so I'm yours, learning how it works. Yours is like $100 less than mine and does wow. all the, scale? Of the same thing. This guy? Yeah. I th- find it interesting to They're learn. The like I'm, I'm, I'm 54.5% water. Like it shows me that. So right. anyways, that's enough about this guy here. Um, you, you get the gist of it. It's, I'm not talking about losing weight. I'm talking about the technology that and I am kind of inadvertently <laughs> talking about losing weight because that's my right. end game. But the technology that's going to help me to do that, to stay healthy. Will yours show like a graph over Yeah, time? it does. Yeah. Oh, N- more than one graph. Mine. It shows like, so I can click on BMI and it will show me the graph for BMI. It will yeah. uh, wait and it will show me the graph for weight. See? Yeah, that's same like kind of deal. Same idea. Yep. Okay. Same deal. So here's the question I have. Yes. Why do you feel the little electrical pulse well i imagine is that explained well these these electrodes so two of them touch your your left foot two of them touch your right foot right but you said you felt like that dr ho has sensors right like electrical it sends an electrical pulse actually sending an electrical pulse i imagine so it must it has to so you probably can't to. use it. If it doesn't hurt. It's nothing. Well, that's no, exactly what I'm thinking. Yeah, Pre- not- pregnant or pacemaker, don't don't use this. Okay. 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 Interesting. Um, children shouldn't use this. Hmm. Um, all right. So quickly, it syncs with Samsung Health, Apple Health, Fitbit, and Google Fit app. Um, and it was again super easy to set up and pair with with the with my phone, and and that was really really breezy. Um, and I think that pretty much you know covers everything that. Uh, that we need to talk about with that other than the yeah. fact that from someone like myself who really knows nothing about physical fitness to an athlete this thing is for you mm-hmm. like it's it, it it has modes that you can set for a, your various athletic type and it will it will be a, applicable for you so so there's one other thing that i picked up which is going to help me by monitoring my heart rate, my uh, my blood pressure, my sleeping patterns, and things like that. And I'm going to show you that, keeping in mind that that plus this is still under a hundred bucks. So we're going to take a look in just a couple of moments' time. So stick around. Welcome back. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Now, I'm taking an approach this week as I look at my kind of New Year's resolution right. to get healthier, to monitor my uh, my various vitals and, and learn how to become a healthier physical uh, person. And one of the devices that I picked up, I finally gave in, mm-hmm. but on the cheap, and I got myself a fitness tracker. Nice. Okay. Okay. To clarify, fitness tracker, not smartwatch. Correct. Okay. I didn't want a smartwatch. Well, what what makes a smartwatch? Well, the difference between a fitness tracker and a smartwatch yes. is your smartwatch will receive notifications from push your notifications. Phone. Yeah, push notifications. This does that. Be, but be able to like potentially do phone calls, read your text messages, respond, stuff like that. This does that. Really? Yeah. So maybe it's a smartwatch. Maybe it's a smartwatch. They don't hmm. call it either. They ca- they call it. Um, well, they call it what it is. Blood pressure monitor, mm-hmm. activity tracker, heart rate monitor, sleep monitor. Okay. So those right. are the four main functions of this device. Okay. So it is, of course, a watch. And so one of the things, so this is $40 at cat5.tv slash tracker. I wanted to get a cheap 
fitness tracker because you're looking at I'm the dollar signs on your Fitbit, I'm, aren't you? I'm just dying learning, a little inside. I'm just learning <laughs> how I had to shop around. Okay, um, so I'm just learning kind of how I can monitor my own vitals and right. and get healthier by motivating myself and challenging myself by knowing the right. numbers. Right. Yeah. So this is just a cheap fitness tracker. Yeah. Obviously. And I didn't want to go all the way to say a Fitbit or right. one of the, the fancier devices because what if it doesn't work for me? Mm -hmm. I can't justify that. And again, I'm looking at doing this entire process with under a hundred dollars spent. Okay. Right. So for 40 bucks, I got this. It is Bluetooth. It's paired to my phone and it has a, a like an analog looking um, clock on it, which I like. It's got my heart rate and everything else. I can change my mode. It's going to monitor my sleep patterns. Cool. And again, it's going to graph everything so that I can see how am I sleeping? Right. How am I, how's my heart rate? Uh, I noticed when I was having some technical difficulties before the show, I was at 120 BPM. What do you at now? That makes sense. Right now. I'm talking a lot and not breathing a lot. So I'm at 90. No, that's not right. 72. Oh, that's you're pretty good. Winning. 72. I'm at 88. What is <laughs> <laughs> Am I making you nervous? But this is pretty neat. So, so the goal with this is to be able to track my heart rate and my blood pressure. That's mm -hmm. really it. And the sleep pattern thing is cool. There's another thing that I really, really like about this one, and, and a lot of them will have this, is that it has a vibrating alarm. Yeah. So I can set it on my phone the time that I want my alarm to go off, yeah. and it will go off on this as a vibrating function. Yeah. So I don't wake up other people in the house. Exactly. See, yours is super fancy. How much did you pay? Uh, this, this 103 is, this BPM. Is, yeah, I, I'm sitting at 103. It's like clearly I'm stressed out. Um, that looks gorgeous. Uh, yeah, though, I paid 300 bucks for this. This, bucks. this is the new Samsung oh, Active 2. Beautiful. Okay. Mine was and yours like is a Fitbit. Yeah, 130. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so 40. Yeah. So, yeah. I, but I'm very, very entry level. It's not fancy. It doesn't look. Your, I feel like beautiful. Yours, though, it does looks the like same a like an early mine. model Fitbit to me. Yes. Yeah. And yeah, it looks like it. It has all the features that I would expect from a fitness tracker, and of course, being Bluetooth, it's it's graphing everything and mm. it's monitoring everything for me so that I can graph it and see those patterns. Right. So again, by seeing patterns, just like this smart scale that I picked up, by seeing those patterns, I'm able to plan out. How can I improve things? Right. Mm -hmm. If I'm only, you know, getting so many hours of sleep, this will tell me that I need an extra hour of sleep each night. Yes. So then I can plan around that. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, another thing that it does uh, that I really, really love, we looked at Ula long ago, but I've since lost my Ula and, right. and I am really bad for this. I'm always drinking black coffee and always forgetting to drink water. Yes. I try to throughout the day, but this will actually notify me anytime I should be drinking a, a sip of water. Oh. So it's going to help me to keep hydrated as well, which is going to help me to metabolize and lose weight. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, it um, also there, I learned a new word uh, to me that perfectly describes me <laughs> and that is sedentary. Ah, oh, yes. Cause you sit around. I sit around all day long. Yep. Not not like a lazy boy, but like a, a, That's your job. No, but you're at, I'm you're at, the at desk. a desk. Yeah. Yes. I'm at my desk for nine, ten hours a day. Yes. My job actually has been inc like it's changed to more a set. I can't sedentary. Say sedentary. Uh, I imagine that's how you pronounce it. But right. I think so. Whereas that's how I used it. to hustle sedentary. and bustle around. Now I'm slowly and methodically helping people, which is mm. far cool. less active. So, so you are I less mentioned active. that I yes. learned that word because one of the features of this fitness tracker is a sedentary alarm. Oh. I'm like, what the heck is that? So I searched for it and it turns out if I've been sitting still for too long, it'll let me know. Oh, that's lovely. So it's just a quick notification. Hey, get up, walk upstairs, go grab yourself another coffee, you know, just get up on yeah. your feet for a few minutes. Right. And, and that's again, going to help me to good. get more physical activity in my day, keep it so that I'm not like becoming a vegetable through the day and then eating my dinner and you know then just never actually burning anything i guess mm -hmm. but certainly sounds like a good thing to be standing up every now and again <laughs> yep <laughs> sounds lovely ideal. i keep so it's gonna help I me with that i suppose this is why now we're back at the standing studio that is part of it. Yeah. 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 Um, it syncs with, it pairs with an iOS or Android device. You're asking about, like, does it have the smartwatch capabilities? It does get push notifications. I saw, uh, I set up Twitter um, and saw a couple of notifications come in. I saw Gmail. 
a couple okay. of different apps. The one that I didn't see in the app to be able to um, push to uh, push to the to the watch is Discord, right. which was kind of disappointing right. because that's really my main communication through like now, online. That's a small screen though to be able yeah. to read emails, okay, or texts. So what I do is I go to um, the text mode. And then I just hold in, long hold, okay. and I can see it like that. And so then I tap for the next screen. And I got uh, a tweet okay. from uh, from Mrs. Marshman. So right. that's actually showing on my smartwatch. Okay. If, so, oh, yeah. smartwatch, fitness tracker. Yeah, fitness tracker. So you, yeah. you call that a, a smartwatch. You can answer your calls just by tapping your phone. It'll show you the call. ID. Does it have ID. a mic on it or does it, no. conne it connect to your phone? Yes. A, yeah, okay. yeah, it's a controller, but it'll show me the caller ID on my wrist. Right. It'll it'll buzz. So if okay. I'm in a meeting, it'll buzz uh, like vibration, and I can look at it, and it will show me who's calling, and then I can tap it to answer. Right. That and kind you of find thing. battery yeah. life is good? Well, so far, it only arrived today. Okay. No. <laughs> I'm going to give you a hint. I'm going to give you a hint that helps with mine. Yes. Because you want to wear it while you're sleeping, so you can't charge it overnight. Just mm -hmm. charge it when you're in the shower. That's what I do. Yeah, makes sense. That's it. Don't wear it in the shower. Don't wear they, it in the shower. This is waterproof, they call it, but they say... Don't submerge it in hot water. Like, it's fine if you're in the rain or getting your hands yeah. wet or if you're in the bath and not submerging it. It is waterproof to a certain depth, but you're not supposed to dive with it and mm. that kind of stuff. So I would just keep it out of the water for the most part. Yep. And there's no charger for it. It just You just un unhook the case or the strap and it plugs directly into a USB port. Wonderful. So there's no, like, port or anything to charge it. Cool. Um, any other facts about this? I mean, that's really it. Um, I did find, though, if you do purchase this same one at cat5.tv slash tracker, um, the instruction set has you scan a QR code to get the app. And when you do that, it downloads an APK for a Chinese version of the app. Oh. So, so I'm like, okay. what the, how am I supposed to do this? And I couldn't find out how to change the language, but it is in the Play Store. So forget about the instruction manual. Uh, just grab the app called Hero Band 2, and it's spelled Hero Band 1, 1, or I, I, uh, all one word, no spaces in that, and that's in Google Play. I'm using Android. I assume it's going to be the same app name in uh, So will that sync iOS. to a health app, like a Google Fit or anything? Yeah, it has its own app. Okay. And so this is where, because I, I, I wanted to ask you guys the question, why is it worth 300 bucks? Other than it's gorgeous. Like mine looks like a cheap watch. It, well, but, I, yeah. but, but I wanted to ask that question, but one, one answer already came to me. Yes. In that the app for this yep. will use data from that. Correct. The app from this will not use data from this. Correct. So the cheap watch doesn't pair, doesn't synchronize data between yeah. various devices. And I can tell you on my, mm -hmm. the, the one, the one thing that would keep me from buying that watch is yes. the fact that you can't really, um, connect with community because I need mm. motivation of competition. <laughs> you can create, um, teams and things like that at but friends. It would be people only with that watch. Yeah, perhaps. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, so Fitbit is a bigger community. Thing. Yeah. So if you're looking to be competitive, you know, how many steps did you get? You know, that right, kind now of thing. Now I'm just going to have to trust you. I can't right. automatically see. I see. So, yeah. so like when you look at mine, like it has. The, I can see it. This is gorgeous. Guys. Like it has a, a bezel around the, mm -hmm. like it's a it looks, touch bezel yep. so I can move with my finger. So it's little oh, features wow. like that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's yeah. obviously a bigger screen. It Super does have fancy. apps. Yeah. Like I can go through my contact list. I can add specific. Can I, can I, I'm going to use my phone here. to show those at home. What it is that you're actually showing me here. It's sure. very lovely. Yeah. So let me just turn. So you're not getting the, uh, there we go. There you go. So like, you know, that'll give me some of my health stats. Uh, rotate through those different apps. Yeah. Uh, I can add certain activities. Yeah. On the fly beat per minute. Checks the weather. Yeah. So, like, cool, there's so man. much more different. Uh, I can set specific alarms. Uh, so, for 300 bucks, you've got that is a yeah, true like smartwatch. Play sure. music oh, through yeah. here. I can do phone calls through here. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. There's much a lot more, more sophisticated that I can do. for sure. Uh, That's the real. And deal. even like with the sleep, you can see here. Yeah. Like, it'll tell you how long you're asleep, how mm. the quality, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I could set night mode, different cool. things. I could do phone calls from this yep. so that I don't actually have to pick up oh, my phone. Oh, okay. Just, you talk into your watch yeah, like Maxwell Smart. Yeah, exactly. Nice. So it's, you know, you could do a lot more with this. Yeah. Okay. Um, All right. So mine, by contrast, um, and I do want to show you the screen so that you can see that it, it's kind of nice. Color. 
Yeah, it is color. Mine is not. Do you want to hold the phone? Sure. Do you mind? Sure. Thank you, sir. So when I'm talking about this, I'm just... There we go. There you go. So I've got my steps. Calories. Calories. How many miles I've walked. Beats per minute right now. So yeah, the screen's not bad. Different modes. You got different themes that you can use. So if I hold long press, I can change the theme. Oh, okay. Right. So it's pretty basic, but I like that. Yep, it that works. looks cool. Yeah. So, but it does the tracking. It's yeah. got sensors on the back that are going to help me to be able to track those things. Right. Now, I will say the one thing that will set my watch apart from yours, mm. EKG. Be like the yep. actual beats, like your ec- heartbeat is cardiograph. Being, yeah. Which for me, as somebody who has angina, it's a big deal because whenever I have those like fake heart attack symptoms, mm. you can't track that. Like if you have a heart, if you have a heart attack, there's markers that show up after the fact. Angina doesn't. And okay. so what I like about this is with the EKG sensor, that's something that will pop right. up on the fly. So it's like, yep, you're having one of those. It's like, oh, okay, now that okay. totally makes sense. So mine has something called a PPK, a PPG. PPG. What's that? No clue. An ECG measures the electrical activity of the heart using multiple electrical sensors. By contrast, a PPG is an optical measurement of arterial volume which uses a single light-based sensor. Okay. So it shows my beats in a bar graph, or uh, in a graph. But yeah, it's not like beat, 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 beat. It's nothing like that. It's showing, it's like a graph of how many beats per minute. When it logs it every five seconds, it looks like. Okay. So Cool. Yeah, a little bit. Yours is obviously more sophisticated. And you pay for it. Well, exactly. That's yeah. why it was 300 bucks. Yeah. Boxing Day deal. Versus, oh, it was a steal. Yeah. Wow. Nice. Mine was a steal. It was 40 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sasha. I'm happy to be in the middle, really. Yeah. Can we talk about, just, uh, just briefly, I know I've talked way too long. Yeah. Because it's all about you. We'll talk briefly. Can we talk about how you're using technology to improve, like, I, yes, I can't okay. imagine you improving your mood, but the so, device that you wanted to show us today okay. is a mood enhancer. So let me just first say that this is a failed Christmas gift in that, what does that this mean? is a gift that I bought for Dave. Oh, oh, it's one of those, like the times when I buy Becca, the things that I want. I didn't like, I didn't buy it for me. <laughs> I didn't even realize I would want it. I bought it for Dave. Because, okay. Um, Dave doesn't sleep well at night. And so I wanted something that would regulate his sleep pattern. Well, stop so kicking him when change, he's sleeping. Changes circadian rhythm. Right. And, and that can be done by exposure to light. Right. Yeah. And so I bought. I mean, I say yeah, yeah like I know. I, I bought don't him a happy know. light. I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to blind. Okay, you. so this is called a happy light. A happy light. Um, this is a full spectrum therapy light from Cat5.tv slash Happy Light. Will I break? Will I break everything if I turn this on? This. <laughs> well, I, I mean, it's super bright. Let's try. I, it. I would say turn it don't away look from directly. the camera first. No, turn it toward the camera. I think people really need to oh, see. Okay. Just turn down the brightness on your TV, guys. Oh. That's not bad. It's not bad because our camera will compensate for right. it. Right. But so that is super bright. Yeah, that's it. insanely bright. It is the, it is the bright. sun. It'll hurt you. Yeah. That it is hurts. not the sun. It is the sun. It is the sun without UV. Yes. So it's the same brightness as the sun. Right. It's It generates like, um, a, like a faux sun huh. light. Like it mimics the the good qualities of sunlight. Right. So okay. the the... I guess it makes you. It, it the benefit. You mentioned circadian is that rhythm. When you think about what the sun does to your mood. That is what this is to do to your mood, right? So okay. I, first thing in the morning, now I wake up and I sit in front of that light for twenty minutes. Oh. Well, now I'm not a doctor, and this is <laughs> this is could be a placebo effect because I've only been using it. You for have to have five your eyes open. Now. Yeah, but it's not pointed at your eyes. Okay, I'm yeah, like, don't wear that's it gonna face. hurt. Yeah. Look at that for <laughs> don't twenty stare minutes. At it. <laughs> so, so I have been sleeping better. So I, I have a sleep tracker, and I've been sleeping better with this. With oh, see, that's interesting. So, so you use a sleep tracker yes. on your on your Fitbit. Yes. So you can actually legitimately say yes, this is having a good impact. Exactly. So I use that from five to five twenty a.m. Mm-hmm. But I'm sleeping Who well. Who gets up that night. early? 
right? So it's affecting my whole day. Mm-hmm. Now, I found that I'm a happy person already, um, but I found a couple of times, and it wasn't ongoing, but a couple of times I had like a little spurt of like, I feel felt like lifted right like i just mm. and i think that it has something to do with the way you feel on a on a sunny summer day or a sunny right. spring day right you have that little extra oomph. it's supposed to be yeah a mood enhancer it's supposed to limit your cravings to carbohydrates it's really to help um i need that <laughs> it's, it's supposed to help you change your circadian rhythm so uh, alleviate jet lag if you're a traveler that's right? interesting. It would help against, you know, the, all of the complaints about daylight savings time. Mm-hmm. That would help, right? And all you need to do, it's very small, right? It looks like a tablet. It yeah. does. Um, and I, I was it. looking, I was wondering if it, like how many volts it was. Um, it is like a, a barrel plug. Mm-hmm. Yep. So it's not, uh, it's 19.2 volts, 0.65 amps. Uh, that's the device itself, the input power. Um, and it's just a button to turn it on. Yeah. Oh, it's up here. Wow. You're not supposed to look at it. It hurts. And that's the problem. (laughs) Yeah. So that's a shiny head. My goodness. And I love it. Sorry, Dave. So, okay. You said it was failed. Like Dave looked at it and went, eh? Or Dave didn't work for him. No. Dave looked at it and he thought, this is a great idea. And then he turned it on and he said, never. Right there. <laughs> like, I'm oh, not, really? I'm okay. not pointing this at my eyes. It hurts. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so it's, it's not, not that he didn't put that there. So that... He just didn't bother trying. Yeah. So the way you're supposed to, like the way I point it is I point it at me, but not like directly at my face. Okay. Right. So I am, you know, on Discord first thing in the morning. That's when I check drinking my coffee. And this thing's kind of pointed at the side of my face. But my mm-hmm. eyes are open. It's not like straight on. That would be mean to my face. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, how bright is that? Like if, say you put it in your bathroom in the morning and yeah. instead of turning on your bathroom light, you turn that on. Would it be <laughs> that bright? That would oh. suffice. Yes. It yeah. would, so it'd be bright enough that as you're doing your morning routine, getting ready for work, that yes. would light up your bathroom and be just enough light. Exactly. It's sunlight too. So like 10,000 lux at like what is it 5600 kelvin Mm -hmm. like awesome i feel like it would be easy to integrate into a a daily routine okay as long as you are willing to suffer through the fact that when you turn it on at first you're drawn to look at it and oh yes right that's the problem you have to teach yourself to turn it on and look away you know (laughs) i would like to point out that they're talking about health stuff and the word suffer just came in (laughs) enough said don't stare directly into the light, folks. <laughs> it is CSA approved. Um, it's also listed with ETL, and it doesn't generate blue light. I mentioned also that there is no UV, so I guess that means like it's better for your skin. Yes. It's better for your eyes than a natural sunlight. You're not going to have to worry about skin cancer or sunburn, presumably, exactly. those kinds of things, right? So and it just has, the benefits. It has helped me. So yeah. that is... That Interesting. That's mm-hmm. cool. Uh, cat5.tv slash happy light. Keep us posted on that. I'd I love to, to learn more about that. That's cool. Okay. Perfect. Okay. I, I used to use a sun tanning booth when I was young. Mm-hmm. And I remember the, the effects, the benefits of that and yeah. feeling like great after you're done. Exactly. And, and then once my skin started <laughs> boiling, I realized this is not for me. <laughs> so that's good. I Very feel good. like this, you know, being a health episode, it's like, I could have just been like, oh, it's the tech. I'm out of yeah, here. It's like, tech. It's tech. It's I don't not, need to be just, here anymore. <laughs> it's the tech. It's, it's like, we're talking about the tech. Well, I know it's the tech, but it's like tech to make you healthy. And I'm going, well, here's the no, truth. tech Is to educate us. Other tech, to be honest, the, all of the other tech that I w- gifted to Dave at Christmas was mm-hmm. stuff that we had already reviewed on the show. Oh, yeah. That's where I get my <laughs> oh, wow. ideas. That's nice. awesome. So <laughs> that was the only thing that was in like independent thought. Sweet. <laughs> Sweet. (laughs) Very cool. All right. We ready to head over to the newsroom? Yes. Here's what's coming up in the Category 5.TV newsroom. A U.S. convenience store and gas station chain had malware that stole customer payment info for more than half of 2019. If you live in the U.S., stick around. You may be affected. A brain implant has been invented that can read people's minds and turn their thoughts to speech. Amazon's Ring devices were a privacy nightmare in the 2019. Now the company wants to improve its image by giving users control over their security. 
The company that brought us the Impossible Burger is now doing a plant-based pork substitute as well. And Google is adding new privacy and scheduling features to their virtual assistant. Stick around, the full details are coming up later in the show. This is the Category 5.TV Newsroom, covering the week's top tech stories with a slight Linux bias. I'm Sasha Rickman, joined this week by Jeff Weston and Robbie Ferguson. Some quick honorable mentions this week. CES may be flooded with new tech coming out soon, uh, but it's also a great place for companies to show off things that they're working on that may not be coming out to the public. Dell's doing just that with its Alienware gaming family showing off a new concept device dubbed Concept UFO. It's a handheld gaming console that looks similar to a Nintendo Switch, but it's built for full-fledged portable PC gaming. Wow. The handheld gaming console sports an 8-inch display and removable controllers on both ends. Sound familiar? Due to the inclusion of such a large display, Concept UFO is, in fact, noticeably larger than a Nintendo Switch, and it feels bulkier from what I've been told. The working model arse journalist Valentina Palladino got to look at, ran Windows, and was able to render playable games in handheld mode, docked mode, in which a console was connected to an external display and its controllers were detached, and another portable mode in which the controllers were detached but connected by a center bridge. Sony, yes, Sony, has even demonstrated its electric car concept. Wow. They didn't suggest that this is meant for the public, but rather it's being used as a platform for them to demonstrate some of their up-and-coming sensor and entertainment tech. Hmm. The Vision S dashboard is flanked by an ultra-wide panoramic screen for driving information and entertainment combined. Among the internal features of the car is sensing technology that can detect occupants of the vehicle and even recognize them in order to allow for gesture control of the entertainment systems. Hmm. In total, Sony has included 33 sensors in the Vision S prototype. The Japanese firm is known to have developed portable image sensors that can be used to analyze the road in front of the vehicle as well. More from Sony. It's all about Sony right now, but there, ex- uh, as expected, uh, the PS5 is shaping the future of gaming, but also the next generation console is inspiring their home cinema devices as well. Uh, with Sony's newest TVs, they're made specifically with the PS5 in mind, including its 8K wow. resolution. The flagship Z8H can, that's my Canadian pronunciation, is it the Z8H? We'll say, we'll we'll stick with Z. Z Z8H can play at both 8K and 4K with a full array LED and a built-in audio system that outputs sound based on the location of the images on screen. It's also an 85-inch screen. It's huge. Whoa. Uh, There are some more mid-range LCD models in the lineup as well with five different sizes available uh, and able to support 120 hertz 4K. Wow. Let's get into the top stories we're following this week. U.S. convenience store Wawa recently discovered malware that skimmed customers' payment card data at just about all of its 850 stores. The infection began rolling out to the store's payment processing systems on March 4th of last year and wasn't discovered until December the 10th. It took two more days for malware to be fully contained. Most locations' point-of-sale systems were affected by April 22nd, 2019, although some locations may not have been affected at all. The malware collected payment card numbers, expiration dates, and cardholder names from payment cards used at Wawa, in-store payment terminals, and fuel dispensers. The advisory didn't say how many customers or cards were affected. The malware didn't access debit card pins, credit card, CVV2 numbers, or driver license data used to verify age-restricted purchases. Information processed by in-store ATMs was also not affected. The company has hired an outside forensic firm to investigate the infection. People who have used payment cards at Wawa locations should pay close attention to billing statements over the past eight months. It's always a good idea to regularly review credit report as well. 
Wawa said it will provide one year of identity theft protection and credit monitoring from credit reporting service Experian at no charge. Hmm. You get gas and now you got to go through that. Yeah. I can't That's believe crazy. that it was active for so long before they actually I realized. I feel like perhaps one year is not long enough. Just say in Wawa, maybe bulk mm -hmm. it up a little. Yeah. <laughs> That's unfortunate though. Yeah. It is. It's sad. And, and I mean, when you're traveling, you don't think, is my information safe? Like, you, you got yeah. to go. Just go to whatever gas station is yeah. most available. Mm -hmm. But That's my dad I'm always said, go to the same gas station all of the time. That way, you know, if there's a problem, you know where it came from. That's smart. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't work if you travel, though. No. It does not work in that case. Mm -hmm. Scientists have developed a brain implant that can read people's minds and turn their thoughts into speech. Mm. The team at the University of California, San Francisco, says their findings published in the journal Nature could help people when disease robs them of their ability to talk. Huh. Experts said the findings were compelling and offered hope of restoring speech. The mind reading technology works in two stages. First, an electrode is implanted in the brain to pick up the electrical signals that maneuver the lips, tongue, voice box, and jaw. Then, pa powerful computing is used to simulate how the movements in the mouth and throat would, be, would form different sounds. This results in synthesized speech coming out of a virtual vocal tract. Instead of scouring the brain for the pattern of electrical signals that code each word, the focus is on the shape of the mouth and the sounds it would produce. Hmm. Professor Edward Chang, one of the researchers, said, quote, for the first time, this study demonstrated that we can generate entire spoken sentences based on an individual's brain activity, end quote. Hmm. The technology is not perfect yet, but shows incredible promise. Here, let's listen to an actual recording of the system reading its user's brain waves and saying, quote, the proof you are seeking is not available in books. The proof that you are seeking is not available in books. As you can hear, it's not quite perfect, but keep in mind that was generated by reading someone's brain waves. In experiments with five people who read hundreds of sentences in their heads, listeners were able to discern what was being spoken up to 70% of the time. Beyond helping restore speech, there is also the more distant prospect of helping people who have never spoken to learn to speak with such a device. An example might be a child with cerebral palsy. Professor Sophie Scott from University College London said, quote, This is very interesting work from a great lab, but it must be noted that it is at the very early stages and is not close to clinical applications yet. End quote. Well, you can say that, but that is incredible. You right. So, so, like, why didn't they think of this before? Because it's like my approach to weight loss this year is like, right. I'm not trying to lose weight. No, I'm trying to learn how how my body reacts to certain things so similarly they're learning the the movement of the mouth right like the same way well, like part, i yeah. think about uh, like uh, false limbs like robotic yes. limbs they use nerves to actually control the hand and everything so this is like that but moving a false mouth in a way exactly to make the sounds the interesting thing about this though is the fact that it's using the brain signals that would go to the mouth and voice box implies that you have to have already been able to speak. Right. That's why they're saying eventually it will mm -hmm. be. Right. So I think it would be hard to train somebody who's never spoken, and maybe that's it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, like, I'm sitting there thinking, you know, you might have, like, a nonverbal autistic child. Yes. You wouldn't be able to use this. Not necessarily. The way it's That's not, not necessarily yes. true, though, yeah. because we don't. And, and there are cases, certainly, where it's not going to be applicable. And another case would be somebody who stopped speaking because sure. yep. of, say, brain brain damage that has affected yep. their ability to generate those signals. Mm -hmm. So but what if the signal cutoff is somewhere between the brain and the mouth and the vocal right. cords? What if like I you're talking about? Uh, the, a child who can't speak well mm. sometimes you'll see them moving their mouth but there's no sound coming out mm. mm -hmm. and, and and so there are cases where maybe maybe the brain is sending the signal but maybe it's not being interpreted correctly yeah. or maybe there's a, mm. a nerve that's not functioning correct who knows right but this is a case where it's, it's not going to work for it's not a cure-all for exactly. everyone right but with 70 percent accuracy 
This, well, here's the thing. This is the starting point. The yeah. starting point is 70% accurate. I can't even believe they're here. I know. It'll be interesting to see how this plays into things like um, end-of-life care and legal rights as oh. far as ability to take care of themselves. I mean, how many people have you seen their health deteriorates and they end up in a position where they can no longer communicate? But maybe, If it's muscular... Right, but maybe in their head they yeah. still have the ability to process Perhaps. those thoughts, and oh, it's like, like ALS. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. So wow. that could be or very somebody interesting. Somebody who has suffered a stroke. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This totally is great. cool. Great. Okay. So cool. <laughs> Exciting. We have got to take a quick break. More of this week's top tech stories are coming right up. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. With criticism mounting, Amazon's Ring revealed a web dash dashboard of privacy controls it hopes will slash the number of horror stories coming from customers. Earlier this week and in time for CES, the home surveillance camera and internet connected doorbell specialist made a point of unveiling an account control panel it hopes will allow users to better manage the access settings on their devices and keep hackers and other intruders out. The new controls will be available across all products. Ring said in the announcement, quote, the control center will initially let you see and manage your connected mobile, desktop, and tablet devices, as well as third-party services. It will also enable you to opt out of receiving video requests in areas where local police have joined the Neighbors app, hmm. end quote. This comes after Ring found itself under fire on a number of fronts for its privacy policies and security protections. Civil rights groups have raised concerns since the cameras provide officers excessive levels of surveillance power. In short, Ring encourages its customers to share their web-connected camera footage with neighbors and the police, opening up a whole can of worms regarding privacy and consent. Mm. While it's clear there are privacy concerns over cheap surveillance devices being installed in people's homes, hopefully the move to a user-controlled dashboard will help improve security. Definitely. Uh, it, it's interesting, isn't it, how these smart devices originally, when they first started coming out, were taking away the security control from the user. Yep. So we were all having to make the assumption that our devices were secure. Now, as we're learning, no, it's, nah, it's actu much. there's actually problems. Now they're saying, okay, we're going to create interfaces for you to be able to um, control that security. And they're adding features. And, and you know, you can say you know, smart devices and connected devices are a bad thing. Well, they're probably not. They're just young. And I think we do have to give some grace to the companies that are manufacturing them. Sure. Yes. Because they are, they're learning from their mistakes. And I think they're, they're proving, the, too, that they're making changes based on those mistakes. I heard one argument that, well, it doesn't enforce two-factor authentication by default. And I thought, wow, what? Today it doesn't force two-factor authentication? Mm -hmm. And I set up a bank account with my bank this week. And they gave me online banking. And, not and they factor. didn't enforce two-factor authentication. You, you can opt into it. However, right. But they don't but enforce it. the bank didn't do it. So yeah. we're being really hard on a new platform. That's true. For the very same thing that the bank here in Canada, like I'm not, ta I'm talking TD Canada Trust. Yeah. Like a big bank. They don't enforce either. Right. So, so we got to put things into context, but yes, uh, I think it's a good thing that companies are starting to respond to their users. And I think it's kind of neat that they're creating a capability for law enforcement to utilize neighborhood cameras. I remember there was a car accident um, in the summer, um, someone driving a Tesla um, at top speed hit a hill and crashed it. Right. Remember that? Yes, I do. And the police were able to tap into uh, a surveillance camera on a house nearby. Oh, and cool. they saw the entire accident. Like, that's cool. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't want our privacy violated. That's right. the thing. We have to find the line. And I, I think having control and being able to say, okay, the, the one in my garage is mine. Yes. The one that's pointed at the street. You can have You that. can You can have access to that. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, you know, just having a certain level of user control is a good thing. Interesting. Uh, yeah. hmm. <laughs> you know what? I was going to go off on a tangent and I'm like, hmm. nope, just going to stop. New year, new decade. Oh, not going to go there. Is this, is this your resolution? I like it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. A plant-based pork substitute has been launched at CES by one of the leading alternative meat producers. A food product unveiled at the CES tech show? You betcha. Hmm. There's some serious tech involved in creating this sustainable alternative to meat. The new product contains no gluten, animal hormones, or antibiotics, and is designed to comply with kosher and halal rules. Huh. The firm's sausage and plant-based pork products, similar to ground beef substitute, are made using heme, a molecule derived from plants that contains iron and resembles blood. Heme is found in real meat, but can be produced without farming animals. Impossible Foods founder and chief executive Patrick Brown says their expanding product uh, says of their expanding expanding product line. Quote, we won't stop until we eliminate the need for animals in the food chain and make the global food system sustainable, end quote. Beyond that, impossible pork contains around half the calories of sausage meat and is also significantly lower in fat. Until recently, China was home to around half the world's farmed pigs, but millions of them have died or been culled due to the spread of the African swine fever, a viral disease that infects pigs and has no known cure. Pork is in huge demand in Asia. China alone produces and consumes more of the meat than any other country. Impossible Foods say that their synthetic pork product will suit a variety of Asian dishes. Oh, that's interesting. interesting. We're we're I, at that point where, like I I think I said on a show years ago, won't it be neat when they can synthesize this? Right, and they're here. They are in that that tricky little spot where they're just about to tip right over into mm-hmm. full synthesization. I can't speak, but um, but it, what's weird about it from a technology standpoint is that it's like meat, like it's not like ground mushrooms held together with gluten. Right. That's where I have a hard time. So I don't eat meat, but I don't eat meat because I don't like meat. And so I okay. don't like the impossible So that's different from the ethical exactly. or um, sustainability perspective. Exactly. Whereas like people who want to eat healthier or want to, mm-hmm. to tread lighter Less on the earth, I'm happy that all of those things are happening in my life, but that's not the reason I don't eat meat. Okay. So once they're able to do bacon... I think that that's the point when everybody in this whole world is going to be like... <laughs> and everyone who says, but they have vegetarian bacon. But it's not. It's the not. Same. <laughs> Cause I, and I can tell you that because I like the vegetarian bacon and I don't like bacon. So that means mm. that it doesn't Weird. taste like bacon. How can you not like bacon? <laughs> no. I do like spicy I, flavors. on the other hand, eat meat. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And but But I've tasted a lot of these alternatives. Yeah. Have you tried the Impossible Burger? Does anyone sell it? Um, yes, plenty of places, including grocery stores. Any, and it's very any expensive. restaurant exam. Um, um, I think the um, what's the one? On- I think the one that I've tried is Beyond Burger, not Impossible Burger. Right. That's that's what A and W or something. Yeah, A and W has them. Have you tried yeah. it? Mm-hmm. And it was good, <laughs> but it was tougher than beef. Okay. It didn't have a nice, soft like beef tenderness it was tougher like it seemed glutinous to me okay so but that so i yeah it was good but i wouldn't go out of my way to buy it personally but if you were a vegetarian or a vegan and needed an alternative then it's a reasonable alternative and and i mean if in china they're having a a big pork shortage this is it and uh, they use full flavored dishes right so Mm -hmm. i think that really just mimicking mimicking the texture is probably all you really need to do because it's not always needed like i mean if you have some soup and you want to just have like a couple of meaty chunks in it like (laughs) throw in some pork alternative whatever what i want to know though is how did it end up at ces 
Because of the technology. Right, involved. but what technology? I know. I want to know like, more about it. That, I want to know like more about it. You guys are sitting there going, meat, no meat. And I'm thinking, meat, good, bacon, good, pig, yeah. good. How you do this. But how they do Exactly. Yeah. Like, what is it about the tech that makes this happen? Because Jeff, they clearly. The it's, science. it's science. But the fact science. that there's a tech that pulls a specific thing out of plants that to is then produce like it, it's the like, same thing that comes out of meat. Yeah, like that in and, and it's like they're creating crazy. synthetic meat from plants what happens to the but, it, the but it's di that's what i mean by it's different from ground up vegetables right. held together with mm -hmm. gluten it's not like texturized vegetable no. protein it's like it's like meat it's like in meat. a lot of ways this is, like it's very where, very similar that's yeah. where i that's where it they're getting to that point yeah. i still yeah. want real bacon it's like the petri dish this is not but like when we've talked about the petri dish meat that is grown in a dish yes that has never actually been an animal that just right. sounds gross it, yeah it totally does <laughs> But, From a sustainability standpoint, though, I do understand that there's too much factory farming going on. I understand that. Yeah. And, you know, for health's sake, I'm going to, like, eat healthier. Right. I'm not, I'm still eating meat, but I'm not eating as much right. of unhealthy stuff. I just don't cook my eggs and my bacon grease anymore. See? <laughs> healthier. Perfect. <laughs> Moving right along. That's Jeff's solution. <laughs> Google announced on Tuesday all of the new capabilities it's adding to its voice assistant, including various additions to the way it handles privacy. One of the assistant's new privacy features will allow users to delete a record of the most recent command by saying, that wasn't for you. Hmm. This means users can delete voice recordings immediately if someone else starts a separate conversation in the background or if the user decides that what was said should not be shared. Users can also ask, are you saving my audio data to learn more about their privacy controls and to go directly to the settings screen to change their preferences, as well as delete voice assistant activity from a Google account by saying things like, quote, delete everything I said to you this week. Hmm. The assistant has had a fair share of privacy concerns with Google confirming in August that third party workers were systematically listening, systematically listening and leaking private Dutch conversations collected by the assistant. It had been revealed that more than 1,000 files had been leaked from these workers, including recordings from instances where users accidentally triggered Google software. After the incident, Google paused all of its language review operations. These new privacy features come not too long after Google decided to revamp its assistant privacy policy last year. The changes from last year included Google making it default for the voice assistant to not retain audio recordings once a request is fulfilled, meaning that users have to opt in to let Google keep any voice recordings made by the device. It also added a feature that allows users to review and delete past historical audio recordings. Besides the security enhancements, other additions to the assistant announced by Google on Tuesday include the ability to schedule certain tasks. For example, users that have a Google Home integrated washer or dryer can schedule a load of laundry with the assistant. This feature is set to be rolled out later this year. Google has added support for various new smart device categories such as AC units, coffee makers, vacuums, and smart bathtubs, among others. I would love for my device to be able to make me a coffee. Oh, yeah. And bring it to me. <laughs> right. I would like to be able to run a bath. <clears throat> I don't know the about other. the bath thing, and I don't know about the anything with water. Bath and laundry, I think I'm against. I'm not against that. Um, I, I think it would be cool. I know that my neighbor down the street has one of the new like washer and dryer in one machine. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right? So if you put a load of water wash in um but you know that you're going to be home from work at a certain time and yes. you want that stuff to be not wrinkly just sitting there then you could like tap mm. on into your home see i'm the guy who has had pipes break and had right things like that happen so for me it's like i monitor things like i check on the laundry while it's happening right i right. check on the la uh, the dishwasher while it's happening i don't run them when i'm not home I super trust my mm, yeah. everything. Uh, 
my dad had it happen where the laundry machine started spraying water all over and they didn't know yeah. and it just destroyed their basement yep. so it's just like yeah i'm not for that but make me a coffee yeah that'd be all right and bring it to me what i find interesting about this story is that it's Google. Oh, yeah <laughs> the story <laughs> it's google and they're making changes toward users being able to control their privacy once again right but it's interesting that Google kind of missed the boat on this initially. I feel like Google has kind of always been ahead of the game when it comes to that respect for privacy because they've kind of been the front runner. Mm -hmm. um, so the fact that they're trying to play catch up now and the fact that there was audio breaches where conversations mm -hmm. were being shared, I'm, I'm going, wow, Google, come on. Yeah. But I mean, it's good to see that they're making these changes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, but Just it's like all of us, like everybody's learning, right? Including Google, obviously. Right. This, this is why I don't let anyone else do anything. And I do. I'm terrible at delegating because I'm, I'm afraid same. of someone making mistakes. And, and so they've hired a third party company or maybe they had staff that was doing this job and that staff leaked the information yep. yes. that was meant to be internal. Like we need to improve our product. Now I have an Amazon device at home. Mm -hmm. Ditto. So these features like that wasn't meant for you and stuff. Mm -hmm. Are there equivalents on the Amazon devices? I'm seeing very similar kinds of enhancements happening okay. on Amazon. And, you know, I've talked about it before, but uh, the Amazon Echo, I have mine set in the app to make a uh, tone anytime it hears yes. its activity yep. word. And so sometimes you'll hear me if, uh, if it, goes off here, I just say cancel. So in the middle of a, a conversation, somebody says the, the action word by accident, and I hear, delete, and I say cancel. It, and it just, now it comes naturally. So, right. uh, and I wish sometimes it would work in real life conversations with humans. I convinced our kids <laughs> that ours is now cancel. named Gecko. Yes. You can change your, what? No. no because oh, because rhymes. we chose Echo yeah. as, the, as the name. Oh, because you've it got sounds. gecko, I convinced my kids to call it gecko. Nice. I'm like, guys, I changed the name to gecko. So they're like, gecko. That's cool. <laughs> it's, That's it's a funny. good idea. <laughs> it's fun. I like yeah. that. Totally unrelated to the story. But. Yeah. <laughs> Big thanks to Roy W. Nash and our community of viewers for submitting stories to us this week. Thanks for watching the Category 5.TV newsroom. Don't forget to like and subscribe for all your tech news with a slight Linux bias. And for if you appreciate what we do, become a patron at patreon.com slash newsroom. From the Category 5.TV newsroom, I'm Sasha Frickman. I'm Robbie Ferguson. And I'm Jeff Weston. Hey, don't forget to sign up to follow us on Twitter. Yes. At Category 5 TV. We'd love to have you um, conversing with us and following our content there. Um, I actually maintain our social media accounts, so you'll be chatting with me if you're talking with uh, at Category 5 TV. I also have a private, like, personal um, uh, Twitter account, at Robbie Ferguson, if you want to follow me. I do follow back on that one, and that would be really cool. Don't forget, our show is available on Cody and Plex, and uh, or maybe not Plex anymore. I think they made some changes to the channels and Cody how that works sure. definitely cody definitely roku um and uh yeah you get us on our website as well category 5.tv but that's really i mean we flew through i i feel like i talked all night long and i did didn't i it's all about you and your wow work. sorry guys <laughs> yeah well i'm learning to to manage it jeff you know we're helping you burn calories through talking that's it. Yeah. See, Could, does that work? We should have all been like doing squats and stuff while we were. Could we do that? Would that be super annoying for next week's show? <laughs> uh, get, like get those races. bouncy seats, like do the big ball. One one <laughs> foot calf races. I did this the other day, and it. You guys are way it, too healthy. It doesn't work for exercise. Non-animal food, like. I need pizza. It's the first week of January, Jeff. Yeah. Wait till next week. <laughs> We're just Good we're frying point. up bacon here the in the studio. <laughs> hey everybody, thank you so much for being here and it's great to be back. We've missed you so much and we're looking forward to seeing you again next week. Yep. See ya. Bye. Bye.